So if you're like me, you absolutely love photography. You have a passion for it, you love being outside, you love being in nature, and you love capturing those special moments and special places to share them with your friends and family. But, like me, you may be getting a little bit older, you may be carrying some extra weight, maybe not in as good a shape as you used to be. So this video is about how to prepare your body to better enjoy landscape photography. First and foremost, I am not a doctor. I do not play one on TV. So my best advice, first thing, is go see a primary care physician and get a full physical. Top to bottom, all the tests. Find out if you have to deal with hypertension, uh, your blood sugar levels, circulation. You're gonna be outside all the time. So you wanna look at your skin. Just go in, take care of everything, get some baseline data, so that you know if there's anything that needs immediate attention or with your, you know, talking with your, your doctor, you can find out a way to change some habits and improve your health moving forward. Because being a landscape photographer, you are outside all the time. You are walking, hiking, going and changing elevation steps and you want your body to be able to handle it so that you have no regrets later. I was hoping I had something smart to say when they ran by, but I don't. Now that you've talked to a doctor, hopefully you won't break anything. The very next thing to do is to start walking. See how your body responds. Pay attention. Are there any dull pains, any sharp pains? Take it easy. Go slow at first. Walk a block, three blocks, five blocks. Just keep increasing over time and you'll get there. You'll get better and you'll be able to handle carrying a pack on your back for hours at a time, for miles, before you know it. So start walking and listen to your body. So the idea is, once you start getting comfortable walking, add a backpack. Start small with that. A bottle of water, one lens, one camera. Over time, slowly increase that weight and work up to what you would consider a full gear load and that way, when you go out on the trail, you'll be, you'll be ready. You won't be suffering, you won't be hurting as much because it still happens when you, uh, you wanna push yourself for multiple days in a week or something like that. But the idea is get a backpack on, get a camera on, bag on you and start building up the weight and walking around home. You don't need to just go out there day one, put everything you want in a bag and then hit the, hit the trail because uh, you'll, you'll pay for it, I promise. One of the next most important things, they're all important, but really important is water. You wanna drink plenty of water and you wanna get in the habit of drinking water, not just out on the trail. Start your day with water. Uh, get a bottle of sorts. I, I like this, uh, this insulated metal type of bottle. It, the size of it is 24 ounces and it fits in a cup holder in your car, huge. But drink water drink, this is 24 ounces. Uh, the rule of thumb that I've come across is take your body weight, divide that by two, and that's the number of ounces of water you should be drinking in a day. You also wanna be aware of your caffeine intake throughout the day. How late was your last bit of caffeine? Was it soda, coffee, tea? You know, try to make sure that uh, by dinner time you're done that way you can fall asleep and get enough hours of sleep. Hours of sleep is the other important factor where if you're only getting four or five, maybe even six, that that's, might not be enough to help you in the next day as far as uh, stamina and endurance and recovery. So take a week or two and, and change your sleeping habits. Try to get more sleep, focus on that and, and see what difference that makes for you because it made a world of difference for me. Something else to consider is the use of supports and braces. I now use trekking poles and they become, uh, I don't go on a hike without them because they, they have helped me tremendously with uh, puffiness in my hands. I used to get a lot and my wife as well. So now using the trekking poles, I don't have to walk with my arms above my head and get that circulation going again. Uh, they also help with support. Like if you're doing a lot of stairs or even rock steps and roots, you know, they help you 
traverse that with a little bit less exertion and you know it's, it's a tiny little bit difference but on a three four six mile hike over time that's a big difference and that's a big help uh, by the end of the day i feel much better and less sore <laughs> uh, i went to a podiatrist and i have uh, inserts for arch support i have plantar fasciitis so i've got those in my hiking boots and uh, that again, something else that makes a tremendous difference in my ability to get out for the day and not be too sore or even get through the day where I'm, I'm not achy and sore and I don't feel like I have knives shooting into my heel. Something else, uh, trekking poles, oh, knee brace. I use a knee brace on my left knee and really I only seem to need that when there's a lot more of going downhill. I now use uh, compression socks on a regular basis and it helps keep my legs feeling refreshed and revitalized and, and all that. Um, they've been a good thing. So arch supports, trekking poles, knee brace, and compression socks, and uh, a good ergonomic uh, backpack, camera bag. All these things add together to support and allow me to better enjoy my day out doing landscape photography. So the last thing I want to talk about is your recovery method. Find out what works for you. Uh, experiment maybe a little bit. Uh, I know for aches and pains, people like to use ibuprofen. Uh, if you have access to a hot tub or a warm bath, Epsom salts in a tub works great. Uh, massage, hot towels. Some people have I even have like a some kind of neck wrap full of beans I put in the microwave and that helps my, uh, my neck when it's sore. So some people just want to take a nap. Uh, ultimately, rest and recuperate and put your feet up and find out what works for you to allow you to recover in the shortest amount of time so you can get back out there and get some great photos. Especially a short notice of all of a sudden a sunset is just blowing up. You just want to be able to grab your bag, hit the road, regardless of uh, how you feel to get the shot sometimes. These are all things that helped me. There are, there are tactics and, and things that I did to prepare myself, and I hope they are helpful to you as well. They were very helpful for me. Uh, number one, get a physical. Go to a primary care physician. Get all that baseline information, find out if anything needs attention now or might develop into needing some, some attention later. But you need to start so that you have the information uh, moving forward and can better uh, steer your path toward, uh, toward being more active. Uh, number two, get out and start walking. You don't need a backpack yet. Just get out, go around your neighborhood, around your subdivision, go to, to a nearby park and just start moving, get that heart rate up and this may take weeks if not months uh, don't worry about just getting out the next day and doing what you what you think you want to do take some time to prepare take the steps to prepare your body will thank you down the road uh, so once you are comfortable walking uh, the next would be uh, add a backpack add a camera bag start with a little bit of weight maybe just your water bottle maybe a, a, a camera a lens so over time build that up so that you're eventually carrying your full gear load which for me is about 22 to 25 pounds, but that I'm hoping to cut that back with soon. Uh, after that, drink water. Uh, start your day with water. Uh, get a water bottle so you can help keep track of how much your, your, your intake is, and then uh, drink it throughout the day. Make it easy. I, I got one here that fits into a cup holder in my car, so that way I can, when I run errands, I can bring water with me. It fits into most side pockets of a camera bag easier. When I do go on the trail, I take a larger uh, neoprene bottle. It's not insulated, but water uh, is important so I can stay hydrated. Doesn't matter if it's warm or cold at that point for me. Uh, so after that, uh, your caffeine intake, just pay attention to it. You don't have to change it, but if you want to get into the next step, which is managing better sleep, caffeine is related to that where you want to uh, limit how late in the day you have caffeine your coffee your soda your tea you know if you cut that off before dinner time maybe mid-afternoon even uh, then you'll see uh, an increase in, in the quality of your sleep so <clears throat> manage your caffeine 
better sleep. Uh, think about what braces and supports can help you on the trail. Uh, uh, arch supports, inserts. Um, I went and even saw a podiatrist to get something really you know, formal and, and durable over time. I've had it for a year now. Uh, uh, knee braces, trekking poles, compression socks, all that type of stuff. And then um, experiment with recovery. So find out what works for you. If it's just ibuprofen, if it's just elevate your feet, if it's a, a soak in a tub, you know, find out what, what, what would be achy for you and what helps relieve that. Um, did I get everything? I hope so. I gotta check my list now. You know, so much for one take, right? Uh, walking, bag, water, sleep, caffeine, braces, recovery. All right. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it has some value to it. If not, it's not a lot of new information. I bet you've heard it before, but coming from somebody who's put it into practice, it has been a huge help for me and it gets easier to do uh, the water, the walking, the, the sleep. So, uh, and then going to the doctor related to getting the, the braces and support that, that helped me as well. So all that together, uh, if you put the effort in and take the steps and plan all before going out to the trail and just taking your camera in a bag and going, uh, do some planning, preparation, and your body and your photography will thank you because you'll be able to stay out there longer, go to more places, enjoy more scenery, and get those shots. So thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe this video. Everything helps every little bit helps i'm trying to grow a, a, a community of like-minded people and uh, bottom line is enjoy life while learning see ya am i level and it still fits inside of a car holder a car holder why do i ramble <laughs>